Welcome everyone to our online services for Church of the Holy Comforter, Vienna, Virginia. I'm so glad you joined us and please note that you can join us virtually or you can join us in person outdoors. The bishop has recently now said that she wants to continue to support the governor's uh, limits on outdoor worship for up to 250 people. So we can, we can welcome you there uh, on our front lawn or uh, welcome you here, and in all things, welcome to Christ the King Sunday.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Epistle to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he calls you and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the, his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And you will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me in. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it for one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of one God, creator, sustainer, and redeemer. Amen. In the most recent issue of Christian Century Magazine, the editor, Peter Marty, wrote that he has started a new spiritual discipline. He's attempting to notice how often in a given day that he takes advantage of the personal luxury he has to opt out of certain uncomfortable situations. Opting out is a privilege, he says. If you own a car, you can opt out of public transportation. If you enjoy a certain level of comfort, security, and means, you can opt out of the local public school system and go private or move to an upscale community where the public schools are in better shape. On the expressways of American cities today, motorists can pay extra for the privilege of opting out of rush hour traffic. We're all familiar, he continues, with the inequities of the justice system in which minor offenders can opt out of jail by posting bail or, he says, in my community, he lives in Chicago, having the police call a known relative with a connection. In today's gospel passage, Jesus is making his final plea to his followers and anyone else who will listen. This is his last public teaching before his arrest and crucifixion. His plea is this, how we act in this life, how we treat people, has consequences for our very souls in this life and the next. It's funny that in this story, both the sheep and the goats seem clueless as to why they ended up in the category they did. They're just living their lives, doing what they do. But one group, the sheep, 
treated the least of these with kindness and respect. They fed the hungry, gave water to the thirsty, clothed the naked, visited the imprisoned. The other group, the goats, didn't even notice the least of these, or maybe they did, and opted out. Opting out of the discomfort or inconvenience of seeing and responding to the needs of the least of these may feel like an easy oversight. But according to Jesus, it is the opting out that is the transgression. The transgression that will keep them in the eternal fire. Just who are the least of these who are so important to Jesus that he identifies with them, that he identifies as them? Well, there are those we don't see often because both we've allowed ourselves some myopia, but also because they're often hidden from our sight. They are the weak, the poor, the vulnerable, those with mental and physical illnesses, the homeless, those in prison. Jesus implores us not to ignore, not to overlook, not to opt out of seeing these particular human faces. For what we do to them or don't do, we do to Jesus Christ, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Here's Peter Marty again. As we also know, people who live in relative safety and comfort regularly exercise the privilege of opting out of conversations about racism or, or even developing an elemental awareness of the consequences of systemic injustice. 35 parishioners from Holy Comforter have been engaging these past few months in the challenging work of opting in, looking deeply, into the historic roots of that systemic injustice. The course of study is called Sacred Ground and the curriculum has also led us to explore the current situation we find ourselves in as a country. Recently, we were asked to watch a video called Healing Justice. It takes a cold, hard look at our justice system and the pipeline that often leads young black and brown boys into the justice system. Of course, US prisons are not solely filled with black and brown bodies, but they are disproportionately represented. So here's what we learned in this documentary. Black and brown children are often targeted as troublemakers as early as kindergarten and elementary school, where they are pulled out of class and made to sit on the bench in front of the principal's office where everyone can see the bad example that they have set. There is a connection between where people live, what level of economic deprivation they have, and who ends up in prison. When there are no resources, when you're looked at as already a criminal, when you've experienced childhood trauma with no place to heal it or, or little support from key family relationships, then you have adolescents who do self-harm or who act out against others. 90% of those who enter juvenile hall end up in the adult justice system. Once in the justice system as an adult, the recidivism rate is anywhere from 60 to 90 percent. The policies of our current justice system are based on fear and the precept that people of color are more dangerous than people whose skin is white. The policies of our current justice system understand accountability as punishing someone for the wrong they have committed. We lock people away, we remove them from the community, and we basically give up on them as possible contributors to society. Our current justice system is neither working nor just. Imagine if we could interrupt that pattern. The film gives us some insight into restorative justice programs that are already working miracles. 
Restorative justice works from the precept that true accountability is doing the hard work of looking into the cause of the cause of why the crime was committed. The question becomes not who needs to pay for this crime, but what would bring true healing to this situation for the victim, for the one who caused the harm, and for the community, the society as a whole. Restorative justice is about making things whole again. In the film, we're introduced to Harley Eagle, who was a cultural safety facilitator for the Ojibwe and Dakota tribes. And he tells us that in Native American understanding, we're all connected to one another and to every living thing. And if someone does harm, it's because they have forgotten that they were connected to everyone else. And the way to repair that breach is to bring in the connections, to help them remember to say, you are a relative, you belong to us, we love you, and you have responsibilities. He says this reconciling is done in a kind way. He really likes the word kindness because it references kin relatives, connection. There's a ritual of restoration, he tells about, that some First Nation peoples do that, that's called calling back the spirit, since it is the initial childhood trauma that separates the spirit from the person in the first place. And it all happens in a circle with the relatives all around. It's on these principles that restorative justice circles are now being conducted in juvenile and adult criminal institutions across the country. And the astonishing results are, are there. Recidivism rates fall to as low as 11%. Even the victims experience a healing that is not available to them when harsh punishment, even the death penalty, is meted out. Restorative justice requires a paradigm shift. If a prosecutor were to ask not what was the law that was broken, who broke it, and how should it be punished, but instead, who was harmed? What do they need? Whose obligation is to attend to those needs? Well, then we begin to come close to something like the kingdom of God, as Jesus puts forth. What we do to prisoners, we are doing to Jesus Christ. It was a tough film to watch, but ultimately very hopeful because there is another way to treat the least of these. Opting out of undesirable circumstances is a privilege. And if we have that privilege, we'd be crazy not to use it sometimes. But to use it consciously, judiciously. Because there are so many among us, so many of our kin, who do not have the privilege of opting out. More importantly, we are called by Christ to find more opportunities to opt in, to work for justice and respect for all people in all walks of life because we are all connected. We need to be asking those same questions of one another. Who is harmed? What do they need? Whose obligation is it to attend to those needs? Jesus would say, it's ours. Next week, we begin the season of Advent. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. God is here in the middle of all this messiness, in the middle of the suffering of this week in particular. God is in the middle of the loss of 23-year-old Trentino Longi to his family, 
to this congregation and to the world. Jesus is not some distant king watching from on high. Jesus is here with us in the middle of it all, commanding us, reminding us to love our neighbors as well as our enemies, warning us that our souls are at stake if we do not treat people as we would treat him. As Jesus walks with determination to the cross, he could opt out, but he doesn't. Instead, he opts in and asks us to join him. Shall we? Even one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, came incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Susan, Jennifer, and Porter, our own bishops, for all the bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prison prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To, to you, O Lord, Lord our God. God. I invite you to give thanks for all first responders and those who risk their lives to care for 
our communities and people, for EMTs, for police, fire, grocery workers, doctors, nurses. We pray for all who are battling COVID as the virus surges. We give thanks for the hope of a vaccine coming to us. We pray for a peaceful transition in our government in this time. Pray for healing for Jim, Barbara, and Courtney. For Joanna Gillespie, mother of Ann Gillespie, who is dying. And for the brother of David Grove, who's in the hospital. We pray especially for Bill, Catherine, and Julia Longy, and our community, as we grieve the loss of Trentino. Out of the depths we cry to you, merciful God, for your child Trentino, who took his own life. Meet our confusion with your peace, our anger with forgiveness, our guilt with mercy, and our sorrow with consolation. Help us to acknowledge the mystery that our lives are hid with Christ in you, whose compassion is over all whom you have made. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Welcome again, everyone, to our pre-recorded worship. We're so glad that you are with us. We hope you will share it with your family and friends. And we hope you're hanging in there. Hope you're keeping warm and well. Just want to invite you to think about giving in this time of year, particularly for our ECW giving table, which will um, offer support for those who are in need in this time. And it, it's in the same way as it's been in the past, except it's virtual. So please see that in our e-news, how to connect with that. And then particularly see our green sales for our youth ministry as well, which is happening again, uh, both in person and virtually this year. Our 1030 offerings are the same. We hope you'll find one of them. Coffee hour is a special Zoom link. Um, adult faith formation, Acts of the Apostles, another one, Children's Sunday School, uh, kindergarten up through sixth grade, all Zoom links and our youth and um, both middle school and high school meet at the church. This stewardship season has been really helpful and thank you so much for the ways in which you have increased your giving to Holy Comforter. That's an excellent sign of our health. And it's also a sign of your faith. Uh, nothing does more for our faith than actually giving financially and being intentional about a percentage of what we give back. And that grounds our faith in a concrete way that then we act out on. And I just encourage you to be very intentional about how you're giving back to God's work in this world and through Holy Comforter. So thank you so much for calling our parish your spiritual home. This couple saved the dates, two more Saturday offerings uh, to help you navigate the new normal. Zoom yoga with me uh, this coming Saturday, a uh, week from Saturday, and um, also an Advent quiet day on December 5th. There's a video that follows these announcements right away, and it's a wonderful video from the Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem, a longtime partner. And so please uh, watch that video and think about our shared partnership with them. On 1030 on Sunday, we have this exciting coffee hour with you, so please join us on Zoom. The director of the Friends of Jerusalem, American Friends of Episcopal Church in Jerusalem, Diocese of Jerusalem, will be joining us at the first part. And then the second part, we'll be talking about for what we are thankful, and with Jackie Thompson and with Amy Heard Davison. So please join us for that exciting time together. Watch this video and consider and be thankful and give. The American Friends of the Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem was formed in the late 1980s during the first Intifada. And our mission is to educate people in the United States about the Christian witness of the Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem in the Holy Land. And we raise funds in the US to support the schools, hospitals, and centers for children with disabilities that the Diocese of Jerusalem owns and operates uh, 30 institutions in Jordan, Israel, Lebanon, the West Bank, Jerusalem, and Gaza. And these humanitarian institutions serve many of the most vulnerable displaced families and children in the Middle East. 
When I was in Jerusalem in early March, I had dinner with Hossam Naom, the Dean of St. George's Cathedral in Jerusalem and the Bishop elect of the Diocese of Jerusalem. He'll become the Bishop of the Diocese next spring after a transition period. Hossam has a compelling vision for the Anglican Church in the Holy Land. And I asked Hossam, as bishop elect, about his commitment to the 30 humanitarian institutions that the diocese maintains. And he frankly acknowledged that the Diocese of Jerusalem sustains these schools and hospitals at great cost and sacrifice to the diocese. But he said to me, and I, I want to quote Hossam here, he said, these institutions are our presence, our witness to Jesus, that testify every day to the love of God, the forgiveness of God, and the grace of God. They are the church's response to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Our service ministries help to dissolve differences. Without these ministries, we are a small, struggling diocese that would soon disappear. It is the fulfillment of these institutions' mission that bring us closer to God's kingdom. You know, the, the image that I have of the Diocese of Jerusalem and its ministries is that of the suffering servant of Isaiah. Jerusalem is not the triumphalism of Rome. It's the place that needs healing and the place that intercedes for others place where Jesus bore the burden of the cross. And I'm struck that the circumstances in the region make the ministries that we support. These institutions exist because it is the Holy Land. And I think it's the very struggles of these ministries, the struggles of Jerusalem, that, that point to God. So I'm deeply grateful for your caring, for your believing in the impact of the Diocese of Jerusalem's witness. And of course, I thank you for your gifts. Uh, these ministries you support are living out God's highest level of expectations for the Holy Land while operating in the basest human conditions. So I urge you all to keep our brothers and sisters in the Holy Land in your prayers. Please let them know that they are not forgotten. I think that's our job as witnesses to the birth, life, and resurrection of Jesus, not to forget. Thank you very much.
Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, and reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my cup of the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed, you destroyed our, our death. death. Rising, Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, Jesus come in glory. glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our true, eternal home. Through Christ and in Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you, now 
has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. pray together the, the prayer uh, of receiving spiritually. My Jesus, I, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the, of the altar. altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since, Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart. As, As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
And now may the blessing of God, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds strong in the knowledge and love of God, and in his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and those you love and pray for, now and always. Amen. Amen. into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>